Let's uh, start with, um, I always get this, I'm not sure, the BRICS, that's Brazil, BRICS. Russia, India, and China. Have I got South it? Africa. Oh, and South, South Africa, South Africa South at the end. Right. That, South Africa anyway, joined. Listen, they, they've got a summit going on, yep. they? and they're really beginning to talk about using their muscle uh, a bit more. Look, absolutely, and, and I don't think we can stress how important this group is and how big this group is. I mean, this, the BRICS account for 45% of the world's population. They account for a quarter of the world's glo or the, the global economy at some $13.5 trillion. And, George, you talk about them getting louder and, 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 and and bigger, uh, bigger voice. That is because, and I think it's fair to say, and we can be frank, they've been fed up. The BRICS have been fed up for, for some time now. There's been much talk about the rise of BRICS. And, yeah. And they, of course, have very different positions, or they've taken different positions in the Security Council and other UN bodies. Um, how do you see their rise and what, what, how they will influence global governance now? Well, I think there's no doubt that countries like Russia, China and India have a very different conception of international relations and still believe it of it as a sort of uh, believe in old fashioned concepts of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the other hand, I don't agree with those people who say those who care about human rights and multilateralism are only Europeans. <laughs> I think if you look at Latin America, you look at Brazil, which is a brick, <laughs> you look at African countries, you look at Japan, South Korea, Thailand, all of them are realizing that their future depends on, in a globalized world on multilateral arrangements. So I think there's going to be a long-term competition about norms. What I also think is that the more that China and Russia and India internationalize, the more their companies are subjected to some of the same pressures as Western companies. You know, you find that Chinese companies do respond to NGO pressure. They have to for market reasons. So it, I'm not saying, oh, it's, they're going to change eventually. It's inevitable. But I think if they don't change, it's going to be very worrying for the international system. And there are possibilities for change.